Hello guys, welcome to a new video where I'm going to build a website a social network step by step. I'm Sergio Lema, software architect, and in the video of today, I'm going to explain the three tiers architecture, show how to use the dependency injection, and the string controllers and services. You can find the GitHub project in the video's description. But before starting, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss a video. Let's start with the three tiers architecture. What's the three tiers architecture? We divide our application into three tiers, three layers. The presentation layer, the logic layer, and the data layer. The presentation layer will handle the data to be shown. As we divided the website into front-end and back-end application, the front-end already belongs to the presentation layer. But in the back-end application, we can also prepare the data to be sent to the front-end. This part is the controllers part. The controllers are the entry point from the front end and we call the different services to build the expected result for the front end application. The logic layer, as supposed by its name, contains the logic of the application, the business logic. This part is the services part. In our case, for a social network website, it contains the logic to fetch the adequate messages to be displayed to a user, the images to be displayed, and how to create the connections when adding a new friend or posting a message. And finally, the data layer, which contains the structure of the data, how the data will be stored in the database, and how the data will be fetched from the database. This is called the data part. Let's go now with the controllers. As said in the beginning, the application I'm building is the backend of a social network. So I will create two controllers. One to handle all the community information. Which is displaying the messages and images and posting the messages and images. And the other controller which handles the users. as searching the users, displaying a user profile and friend requests. And now, how do I tell Spring that those are controllers with a single annotation? Nothing more. I could have added the annotation controller. But this one also has the request body annotation, which tells that all the endpoints will have a web response body. As I've separated the backend and the frontend application, the frontend will contain all the displayed information, the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, and the backend, the business information. The backend will feed the frontend with compressed information, not with HTML. The responses from the backend will be sent in JSON. With the response body annotation, Spring understands that all the endpoints will return the data in a JSON format. Only a single annotation, the REST controller, to configure all of this. Next step, make the controllers to accept HTTP requests. I need that the front-end request enter into the backend application, search for the requested information and return the expected result. Let's use an example. When loading the homepage of the social network, I want all the messages of the community to be displayed. I want that when the front-end code get the one community messages, all the community messages will be returned. Why v1? This will be useful to handle different versions of a mobile application. As this controller will handle all the entry points for the community requests, I start with the annotation request mapping with the prefix v1 community. Then specify the end at each entry point. The first one gets the community messages. I can use request mapping again with the method I want get or use get mapping directly. The second one 
get the community images. The third one, post a message. And finally, post an image. The same will be done for the user control. You can check the result in the GitHub project. OK, I have the HTTP request which enters in my application, but I need to return something as a response. Response entity which takes as generic the class to be returned. The response entity contains also the status of the HTTP response and some other informations. I will create all of those classes into a package DTO, which means data transfer object. Those are classes used to send and receive information. This way, I separate the presentation object in the DTO package and the database structure in the data package. It's another security layer to hide information to avoid publishing critical information from the database. Let's just create some fields into those objects. And how do I accept incoming parameters from those entry points? For the first and second entry point, I want the information about the page. I don't want to load all the messages of the database, because it could be thousands and thousands. To avoid this, I load the messages per pages of 10 elements. So, the frontend has to say which page it wants, the first, the second, etc. And for this method, I need a more complex input, as I want a message to be stored in the database. And finally, if I want an image to be uploaded, is the title of the image. Entry points ready. Now I will create the same structure for the services. Now we come back to make the right connections here.
Same question. How do I then spring that those are services? With the annotation service. Nothing more. Let's start with community service. You can check the user service in the GitHub repository. Let's create the four methods similar to what I've created in the controller. I will leave them empty for now, as I need to search in the database the data, but I haven't configured yet the database, so I will only return some dummy response. Okay, both controllers and services ready. How do I make the connection? How do I use the dependency injection? If I take a look at the service annotation, it emulates from components. The same for the controller component. Sprint will look for all those classes annotated with the component annotation and register them into an internal list. The scan starts with the main class. Because of the Spring Boot application annotation, having both the controllers and the services in this internal list of Spring, how do I use them? Let's go to the controller. I will need a community service. Let's create the instance variable as final. Now create the constructor. This will set the instance variable. And that's all. Spring, when building the controller, will take a look at the input parameters, search for this class in the internal list and inject it. That's all. I only need the component annotation and the constructor. That's how the dependency injection works. Now that I have the service available in the controller, let's go to the final step. Use the service result to respond to the HTTP request. Let's call the service with the correct input parameters. And now, how do I build the response entity object? This way, response entity is already filled with the HTTP code 200, which means OK. In this case, as I create a content, I want to return a 201 code, which means created. So I will use created, but now the input parameter is an URL to tell where to find the created message. This URL can be created this way. With the URL where you will find the created message. And return the body as previously. Here, response entity will have the 201 HTTP code, the created URL, and the body content returned in the response.
This way, response entity will have the 201 HTTP code, the created URL, and the body content returned in the response. Do you trust me? Of course not. Let's try it. Let's run the application at the application class. Server started, available port ADID. Now I will use curl, call a URL, to send a request. Localhost, ADID, Those fees are just to print more verbose information, as the HTTP code and other properties. Here is the hard-coded response I've added in the service, with the expected HTTP code. Let's try the creation. Here I need to specify the HTTP method, because the default one is GET. Now, as I send a body, I need to specify the format, the content type, which is JSON, and finally, the content. And here is the result, the expected one, with the 201 HTTP code the URL, and the body. As you see, the conversion from JSON to a class and from the class to a JSON is already handled by Spring Web. No configurations needed, only the correct annotations. And Spring with Jackson make it easy. OK, let's recap what I've done. I've created the controllers with the REST controller annotation, the services with the service annotation, the controllers will need the constructor with the needed services as input parameter, this way the dependency injection can be used, specify the entry point URL with the request mapping, and finally return a response entity. And I have a web server which accepts HTTP requests with JSON content. All this without any configuration, only some annotations. That's all for this video. I will continue with the authentication and the server filters in the next video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss a video. Thanks.